Hey, this is Stacy from Let's Cook Y'all. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, welcome. We're really glad you're here. We hope you enjoy our What's For Dinner videos and our other content, and you'll consider hitting that red subscribe button. We're back with another week of yummy dinners, a couple of little bonus desserts and lunches thrown in, and we show you how we make each dish. Hope you enjoy the video. We are starting out this week with another family get-together. This was at Tim's dad's side of the family. There was deviled eggs, chicken spaghetti, some beef brisket, his Aunt Nancy's homemade yeast rolls, some chicken and dumplings, potato salad, Kentucky Fried Chicken. There was an assortment of fresh vegetables from everyone's garden, and then also some ham and dressing. There was a big spread of desserts, pecan pie, a chocolate cake, and apple pie. We brought some cookies. There was also some muffins and other pies and then a very big banana pudding. It was delicious. We had a great time visiting with family. And as always, I threw in one picture. This is Tim, his parents, our great nephew, Hunter, and me. See if you can tell whose plate is whose. Our freezer is well stocked with ribs. So this night I took out a slab of baby back ribs. We prefer to take this white membrane off the back. Years ago when we used to always do them in the smoker, we tried it with the membrane on. And with my hand, I was showing you how much I struggled. But we like it with the membrane off, so I get them out and bring them to room temperature, take this membrane off, and then I sprinkle them liberally with a dry rub that I make. It has some brown sugar, salt and pepper, some chili powder, paprika, and onion powder and garlic powder and I put that on liberally on both sides of the meat and then let it rest for at least 30 minutes at room temperature up to an hour. I par cooked the ribs in the Instant Pot before we put them on the grill. I put them meaty side out with some root beer and water in the bottom. I thought you usually put the barbecue sauce on it out on the grill. Too hot out there for you? It's warm. It's warm. I think it's 105 with the heat index, something like that. I would do as much as I could inside too. And we've got ribs. Tim's got baked beans. I uh, had him grill me a piece of salmon and some french fries. He took his plate. It looked better than mine. I'll show you a picture of it right here. But he didn't want to wait. So that's what's for dinner tonight. And this is what our leftovers look like and an itty bitty slice of cheesecake with some strawberries on top. I had found this cheesecake marked down at Kroger for 99 cents. We split that puppy into eight little bitty slices and so that was dessert. Couldn't be easier. Burgers on the grill. Tim's got some fries with Cajun seasoning. I'm gonna try the Mahi Mahi burgers from Trader Joe's and I'll leave a comment and some fruit for me. That is what's for dinner tonight. Tim loves a burger. Not as much as a steak, but he loves a burger. I started some prep work in the afternoon. I cut up some celery and some carrots to go with hummus. Then I tried a new recipe for a creamy feta dip. It was equal parts feta, Greek yogurt, and sour cream. I added some lemon juice, salt and pepper, and then I tasted and adjusted as I went. I added a little more of what I thought it needed, which was feta, a little lemon juice. In my pantry, I have this box of gluten-free falafel mix from Trader Joe's. So I got one cup out and mixed it up with the water and then let it sit covered for 30 to 60 minutes. And I'm going to try baking them rather than frying them. I had two large zucchini that I needed to use. So I decided to pull out another old recipe I had not made in a while for a stuffed zucchini. This recipe has you taking the zucchini, covering it, putting it in the microwave to basically steam them. So these were really large. They weren't quite fork tender, so I put them back a little bit. And then when they were cool enough to handle, I scooped out the insides. I did save the zucchini pulp. It's part of the filling. There was a lot of water, so I tried to get as much of the liquid out as I could. I chopped the zucchini pulp and the onions and sauteed them in a skillet. After the onions and the zucchini pulp were cooked enough through, not brown, but just soft enough, I added some flour and then some dried basil, some salt and pepper, sauteed this, and then added a little milk and let it cook until it thickened down quite a bit. 
I took one beaten egg and the instructions say to add the cooked mixture to it. I like to do that a little bit at a time, so I did a spoonful at a time to kind of temper the egg mixture. This is the filling and you go ahead and add some Parmesan cheese. I stuffed the zucchini shells with the onion zucchini cheese mixture. Then I took the falafel mixture that had thickened up and formed little patties, sprayed them in olive oil, and these baked at the same time and temperature. My little falafel patties are out of the oven. I think next time I'm going to try them in the air fryer, but I went ahead and did the baking instructions. I probably won't ever do them in the fried oil. I'm sure that's the most traditional. I'm sure they taste the best, but I'm trying to be a little healthier. So I tried baking them. Next time I, with the rest of the mix, I'll probably try them in the air fryer. I do have a recipe that has a stuffed zucchini with meat, but this is the one I like for meatless. This is a very old recipe. It's either from a cookbook or a magazine in the 90s. If you're interested in it, let me know and I can type it up and add it to our website. And then this is the creamy feta dip that I made earlier today. So I'm gonna put my plate together and show you that. Tim, when he gets in hot from the golf course, will not be thrilled with falafel patties, stuffed zucchini, and feta dip. And he will probably eat a leftover hamburger from last night. But this is what's for dinner tonight for me. Tim is in from the golf course and agreed to try the... Falafel? He kept calling it frittata. The falafel and the stuffed zucchini. And he's got celery with his hummus and Looks pita like bread. Some kind of fritter. It is kind of like a fritter. That's Tim's, that din gremlin. That's Tim's dinner tonight. Tim liked the falafel so much he fixed himself a giant ice cream sundae to go with it. That's what's for dessert. It's going to be hard to beat the falafel, but I'm going to try. <laughs> a quick product review from Trader Joe's. These oatmeal cranberry dunkers were a big hit with both of us. We plowed through this very large container in no time. I would not hesitate to get these again. We are getting excited in our house for football season. The Saints are now in training camp, so I decided to go ahead and test out a new recipe for upcoming game day food. This is for some ham and cheese pinwheels. I did not have the crescent dough sheet that it asked for, so I just pinched the seams of a regular can of crescent rolls together, laid out ham and Swiss cheese. I thought it would be difficult to roll it. It was not rolled it up long ways, and then cut it into 12 pinwheels. I placed them in a greased baking dish and then mixed up the topping. To some melted butter, I added mustard, dry onion, some poppy seeds, and then some Worcestershire sauce, and then poured this all over the ham and cheese pinwheels before they went in the oven to bake. And I will leave a link to this recipe in the description box below. So the hot ham and cheese roll-ups or pinwheels are out of the oven. They were swimming in butter. I should have recorded it when they first came out, but I gave them about five minutes while I was finishing up the salad and washing and cutting me some fruit, and they did absorb back. I even did cut the butter back from the original recipe, and as I said, I'll leave a link below. So we're going to give these a try, and that's what's for dinner tonight. And a little bonus lunch. I went out with my Bible study ladies. I had one of the daily specials, which was baked chicken with couscous and broccoli. We had a lovely time, and that's going to wrap up this week's What's for Dinner. Thanks so much for stopping by our channel, Let's Cook Y'all. Hope you have a wonderful and truly blessed day. We'll see y'all in the next video.